All right, so simplifying expressions with E, there's two things I want you to know. One, E is a real number. Number two, just treat E like any other variable. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, what, how, how is this gonna help me out? Well, see the problem is when students first encounter E, they treat it like some mysterious number that they no longer can do anything that they just learned in mathematics. And no, E is just like any other number, right? So just treat it like any other number. It's not magically special where all of a sudden everything just got so much more confusing. E is a number. However, just like a number or a variable, when you're simplifying expressions, the same properties that apply to variables and numbers are going to apply to E. So a lot of times I like to simplify expressions with X's and Y's and M's and N's. Well, again, treat those same properties with E. So in this video, we're going to work through 10 different examples, helping you simplify expressions with E. If you're ready to do that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. In these first three examples, what you can see is I have an exponent multiplied by another exponent. The main thing I want you to think about is the product rule of exponents. Remember, if I had like X to the M times a X to the N, what do we do with the exponents? We just add the powers, right? And most students can kind of remember that. But again, it comes down to this idea of once we kind of get to like E's, it's like they forget everything. So just to kind of go back to remembering, treating this as like a variable, just go back and say, well, what if you had X squared times X cubed? Like, what would you do? Oh, you'd say, oh, that's X to the two plus three, which is going to equal a X to the fifth. And yeah, this is the exact same thing with E's. So don't make E anything more crazy than what it really is. If you're going to simplify this, then E squared times E cubed is just gonna be E to the two plus three, which is gonna equal a E to the fifth power. So in this next example, we could definitely use the reciprocal identity. Remember that any time we have an exponent raised to a negative power, we can go ahead and rewrite that as a power, positive power. So just remember if I had like E to the negative M, I can rewrite that as a one over a X to the M power. But again, in this example, I would just prefer to go ahead and use the product rule. So again, doesn't matter if I'm adding two positive powers or in two negative powers or one negative and one positive. Again, remember, as long as the base is the same and you are applying multiplication, then just add the powers. So in this example, I have negative three plus five, which is going to equal a positive two. So therefore the answer is E to the second power. Now in this example, we also have something what we call coefficients. Now remember coefficients are not part of the rules of exponents. Just treat them as a second operation. We're going to be applying multiplication with the exponents and we're going to be applying multiplication with the coefficients. So two times five is just going to be a 10 and e to the x times e to the x plus 3 again is going to be the product rule. We're going to add the powers and when we go ahead and add the powers. The only thing we can combine is the x plus x, which is going to be a 2x. Therefore, in this example, we have a final answer of 10 times e to the 2x plus 3. Okay, in these two examples, you can see we have a quotient, right? We're applying division. So the best thing we're going to want to do in this case is apply the quotient rule of exponents. And just remember, whenever we have a exponent like x to the m divided by x to the n, we're going to now subtract the power. So that's going to be equivalent to x to m minus n. So in this example, I have e to the x divided by e to the 2x. So therefore, I can just go ahead and rewrite this as an e to the x minus 2x. Now, x minus 2x is going to equal a e to the negative x. We can go back to our negative exponents rule and recognize that if I have e to the negative x and I want to rewrite that as a positive power, I can simply put that under 1. So therefore, my final answer in this case is with a positive power is going to be 1 over a e to the x. Now, in this next example, again, I have some coefficients, right? I have a 6 and the 8. So I'm going to treat that first because it's like a separate operation operation than with my rules of exponents. So now notice that eight does not evenly divide into six. So when this is the case, another thing we want to do is see if we can simplify it. See if there is a common number that six and eight share that we can divide evenly into both of them. And in this example, that common number is going to be two. So to simplify the fraction six over eight, what I'm going to do is divide the six and the eight both by that common number two. And when I do that, I get a six divided by two, which is a three and an eight divided by two, which is going to be a four. Now that's going to be multiplied by my exponent, which again, using the quotient rule, I'm going to subtract the powers. Now, some students will get confused here because E doesn't have a power, right? Well, again, there is a place value here, which is going to be of one, not zero. Don't make that mistake. I know you're thinking it, but again, remember anything raised to a zero power is going to equal one. So E raised to the first power is just the same as E. But for the sake of applying our rules of exponents, we want to make sure we know that E is there, right? We just don't want to have a four X here. So in this case, we're going to have E to the four X minus one, and that's going to be our final answer. Now you could write it as a fraction multiplied times E, or we could read write this back as a rational problem with a three times e to the four x minus one all divided by four. It really just kind of depends on what you or your teacher prefer or is required. Now in these three examples, you can see we have some extra steps and that is perfectly okay. All we're simply going to do is work on one property of exponents at a time. Now in this first example, what I would actually do is simplify inside my parentheses first. And typically when I mean simplify inside my parentheses, I mean get rid of a negative power. So I'm going to rewrite this using the negative power rule as its reciprocal. 
And now you can see that I actually have a fraction being raised to a power. Now, when we have that as going to be the case, what we can apply is what we call the power to quotient rule. What we can do is take each and every term and raise it to the fourth power. And again, this property works because each and every one of these terms is being separated by multiplication or division and take everything raised to the fourth power. Okay, and now that we've distributed everything, now we just need to know what exactly is three to the fourth power, two to the fourth power, and e squared to the fourth power. So again, just remember anything raised to the fourth power just means it's being multiplied by itself four times, like three times three times three times three. And that answer is going to be an 81. Two to the fourth power is going to be a 16. And remember, when I have a exponent raised to another power, we need to use what we call the power rule. So if I had x to the m raised to the n, we're going to multiply our two powers. That's gonna be an x to the m times n. So two times four is just gonna be a eight. So this will be e to the eighth power. There's nothing really I can simplify or reduce with 18 over 16. So that is going to be my final answer. Now in this next example, you could do the exact same thing. You could go ahead and rewrite this as it's reciprocal to get a positive exponent. But then again, notice that I'm now going to be distributing that with a negative one. So all the extra work sometimes can just get compounded and make it a little bit more difficult. So sometimes when you see multiple negatives, it might just be easiest to apply the power to product rule first and then just go ahead and simplify afterwards. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this negative one to both of my terms since they are separated by multiplication and then I'll go ahead and simplify. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to my use of parentheses. Notice how I have the three to the negative first power, right? And then remember that's times AE and I put parentheses around the negative three X and then times the negative. Because again, we're not multiplying the negative times the negative three and the negative X or times an X, right? We're just that quantity negative three X is being multiplied by a negative one. And I also wanted to put parentheses around the negative one because I didn't want it to look like a subtraction problem, right? We're dealing with multiplication. So when I go ahead and simplify this three to the negative first power, I can just rewrite that as a one over three. And then negative three X times negative one is just gonna be a positive three X. And then you can leave this answer as a one third times E to the three X, or you could write it as e to the three x divided by three. Again, whatever you kind of want. Now in this last example, we have a radical. And depending on where you are in your learning or in the course with your teacher, you might not have already covered rational powers and radicals with your rules of exponents. So that's okay. Let me just kind of go through a brief little review for you of how we can write rational powers. So if I have a x raised to the m over n, that is equivalent to the nth root of x to the nth power. So you might want to look at the expression. It might be kind of confusing as far as what exactly power is everything being raised to. So one kind of trick or one thing we can always do is take everything that's under the radical and raise it to the first power. That's not really changing anything. It's just rewriting everything raised to the first power, right? But the reason why that's important is because now I can use this rule of exponent to rewrite everything being raised to a rational power. And the reason why this is helpful is because just like I did in example six, just like I did in example seven, I can apply the exact same power to product rule. I can take this one third, apply it to the 27, and I can take this one third and apply it to the six X. Okay, now again, depending on how good you are with your exponents here, you could simplify this 27 in exponential form, or you could go ahead and rewrite this back as a radical, right? And you could say, well, that's gonna be the same thing as the cube root of 27. Basically, what number multiplied by itself three times is gonna equal 27? And that answer is going to be a three. Now in this example, Again, we're just going to multiply them, right? 6x times a 1 over 3. 3 divides into 6 two times. So therefore, that's going to give me a final answer of 2x. So therefore, that's going to be a times a e to the 2x. So therefore, that final answer is 3 times e to the 2x. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, this helped you with your transition from rules of exponents with variables and numbers to the rules of exponents with e. If you want more examples of me working through exponential and logarithmic equations, check out the examples and playlists I have for you down below, or check out the next video I have for you here.